Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, this is uh, the open day session for uh, the Department of Architecture uh, of uh, UCT. Um, and we're very excited to have everybody here today. Um, we as uh, staff and uh, students have come together to try and share some stories about uh, the school and what it's uh, uh, like to, to, to learn to become an architect, as well as what it means to, to work as, uh, as an architect. So over the next uh, uh, 30 uh, minutes, um, we'll see a couple of slides with everyone here. Um, uh, we are aware that uh, many of you that are in attendance have uh, more than likely done your own research and gone onto our website to check out some of the uh, wonderful and great things that we uh, are, are doing as a school. And in particular, how we we try and make an impact uh, in the world around us uh, through working in communities and just uh, being uh, uh, um, aware of what is uh, going on around us. And architecture has been uh, an incredible tool uh, for us to be able to, to, to make that change. And we hope that uh, the next uh, couple of minutes will be inspiring uh, for all of you uh, to um, uh, uh, to possibly make that decision to to join the school and obviously if you are successful enough to to get in it'll be great to have you in the school we will be uh, starting quite uh, uh, soon by um, asking our hod uh, professor Udendal, to just give a brief welcome if she is here um, if she can just switch on her uh, video and if she is not here, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Timbaweni, uh, who is the undergraduate uh, convener uh, uh, for the for, for the School of Architecture, to to briefly speak to you uh, about uh, what the program is like. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Clint. Is uh, Professor Odendal here? Don't think she is. All right, my name is Philippa Tumuwene. I'm the undergraduate, which is the BAS program convener, which means I oversee the first, second and third year, which is the undergraduate program. I am also the convener of two courses in first year, which is technology and representation. So what I'm going to do briefly in the next minute and a half is, is talk to you about um, a, an overview of what the undergraduate program does. At UCT, the undergraduate program is continually growing and what we've done is start to create specializations in the different year. So in the first year, you'll be picking up skills, uh, foundational skills that are supposed to help you on your journey as you become a professional architect. In the second year, um, Clint, who takes technology in the second year, and Professor Balanda, who takes the design, then gets you to work in real life situations where you contribute to build projects in and around Cape Town, and you actually start to build and make things. And then in the third year, we open that up even more, and we um, have our students participate in international competitions. They then do a major project to simulate the architectural profession. So what you um, realize is that we start with foundational skills. We then give you some kind of practical engagement with architecture, and then we allow for you to imagine creatively in the third year uh, with the skills that you have picked up in the first two years. So I'm, I'm quite excited to see you guys next year. Please do apply. And it's always very um, good to see kind of what we're going to be getting next year. Thank you very much, Clint. Uh, thank you for Philippa. Um, also, just a reminder, um, if you have any questions during the session, um, you're welcome to put the, those questions in the chat room and at the end of the session when we all have that 15-minute uh, uh, Q&A session, we will do our best to answer those uh, questions. We also just want to do, uh, give a special welcome uh, to, to learners from, uh, uh, from, I think, the community of Kailicha, who's with uh, Buchli today, so it's really great to to have you guys here. Um, I'm going to give over to Janine to share her screen, uh, who will speak to us about the admission uh, uh, um, process. Thank you, Janine. Hi, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Janine, and I'm the Departmental Manager for the School of Architecture, Planning and Geomatics. And today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, admission for the program. So the application process, the application itself um, requires the, it's twofold, so it requires a UCT application, which is done online, and it also requires you to submit a portfolio, which is a required drawing exercise. 
and then um, just what you need in terms of the academic requirements. The minimum academic requirement to apply uh, is 50% for maths and 50% for English. And then the minimum faculty point score to apply is 348. The minimum portfolio score, this is all for application, is 50%. And then for the BAS applications, MBT tests are not required for 2023 admissions. But if you have a second choice application that is not within the engineering faculty, you must do the NBT um, tests. They will require those, those results. So just bear that in mind when you're making your applications. Uh, how to make your application? Uh, you apply online. Uh, the link here we will put in the chat um, just so that you can you can get a sense of where to find um, the application, the actual application forms. Part of the application requires you to um, also just follow the undergraduate prospectus because that gives you lots of information of the program, how to apply and what's required. When you make the application, use EB012 which, as the degree code. That will that will show the university that you're actually applying for the BAS program. You also need to submit certified copies of your academic results and then make sure that when you're doing your online application, there's a list of um, checks that you need to do. Make sure that you tick all everything that's on that checklist and then at the end of your application, the, you must click the submit button. If you don't click the submit button, it means your application is sitting in limbo and it's not gone through to UCT, which means we can't actually then consider the application itself. The closing date for the UCT application is the 31st of July uh, this year, and they're not accepting any late applications either. The portfolio itself, this is a compulsory component for the BAS application. Um, and again, I've got some links here that I would have loved to show you, but what I'll do is I'll put them in the chat as well um, in terms of what where to find the portfolio, what is what the portfolio itself consists of. Um, but we've got some some detailed information on the web as well to give you that to give you some insight. Uh, yeah, so the portfolio itself, yes, it's a component uh, compulsory component. Um, the required drawing exercise, there are six tasks that you must do. And um, then you can also submit supplementary work. Now the suppl supplementary work is optional. Um, it's those six exercises that are compulsory that need to form part of the, the portfolio itself. Um, the, the portfolio again needs to be submitted digitally in one PDF format and it needs to be sent to the administrator and her details are on the on um, the screen, but they'll also be in the application when you when you look for the um, portfolio information. There's two closing dates for the portfolio itself. So if you manage to get your portfolio done early, you can submit for the 31st of July, which is also the date for the application, um, the UCT application. Then the final submission date for the portfolio is the 31st of September. And again, note no late uh, submissions will be considered. I've also got a list of um, frequently asked questions that will assist you just to give you some more insight to the program or insight to the application. Um, that if we don't manage to answer all your questions here today, you can go to that website and find that information. Thanks, Clint. Uh, thank you, everyone. So um, as as mentioned before, I am in the second year uh, of, of, of teaching to the second year um, technology and design course in the school. So I'll just uh, briefly take you through some of the work that we've done together with uh, Erin Lefleur. Um, but just before that, I think it's uh, also important that you can also go um, and check out our our website, which uh, um, Janine has, has alluded to, and you can find that uh, on the uh, the link uh, apg.uct.ac.za uh, forward slash apg forward slash open day. Um, and here you can also uh, get to see some of our uh, projects that we've done and the series of exhibitions um, that uh, has been um, uh, conducted uh, by the school uh, by the different uh, years of study. 
also what is uh, I think a very useful um, uh, platform that you guys can can go to as well is uh, uh, the CIFA website, which is the Cape Institute for Architecture. Uh, and uh, you can go to the student portal um, and uh, the link there is just uh, students.cifa.org.za uh, uh, and uh, the slide you're seeing now is really just uh, the home page and this particular uh, portal allows you to explore how you learn architecture and uh, how to uh, how and, and and what the the discipline is like um, on this uh, web website you also are able to see the different study paths so you being here uh, obviously means you're interested in doing it via the university uh, uh, route um, but they are also ways of enrolling into uh, universities of technology. And this uh, is just a, 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 a slide that shows you the, uh, the different parts of how to eventually become a professional architect. Um, on the website, there's also a series of uh, stories and virtual tours. So if you go onto it, you can get to explore uh, the inside of an architectural office to sort of see what it is, what the working environment is like. And then just some testimonies by architects that are currently uh, uh, practicing and what they've sort of had to go through during their learning process and what the uh, 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 the benefits are of being uh, an architect. Um, uh, also, just uh, bear in mind that uh, you are welcome to send some questions to uh, uh, Nanette uh, Pickover um, and Jenny Mayer who uh, who's here with us today. And so these are just uh, the email addresses. Um, and then just to give you a bit of insight as to um, what it's like to be a student, I'm going to give over to Erin just to speak to the next couple of slides. Erin. Thanks so much, Clint. Greetings, everyone. My name is Erin Lafleur, and I'm an architecture student in my third year studying at UCT. Please just excuse me, I can't seem to turn on my camera, but hopefully my voice will be enough right now. So I will essentially be speaking through um, this theatre ceiling design project that we had the opportunity to work on in our second year. So in our second year technology course, we were tasked to redesign the ceiling of the Guga Satebe Theatre in Langa, as there had been a fire that had caused quite a bit of damage. So the point of this project was really to come up with ideas and designs that could, at the end of the project, actually be built and installed into the theatre. So not just designing and working through the project in class, but physically testing it out, building prototypes and models of the design to scale, and really focusing on imagining the impact that the design would have within the theatre itself and within the community of Langa. You can go to the next slide, thanks. So we began working on our designs in the architecture studios and received lectures within our course to help us develop and deepen our explorations. Being able to work in studio and see what the other groups were coming up with was always so helpful as designing collaboratively, collaboratively and working with one another is really how we're able to get the best results. We continuously received feedback from our lecturers and tutors so we could find out what elements of the designs we were working what needed to be worked on further and what elements were really working so we could progress our designs further. From that point, some of the group's projects were taken forward to continue to be developed and actually be taken to the theatre, as you can see in the image there, um, so we could see what everything looked like within the space. This prototyping phase was a really important step as it allowed us to look um, for different materials and actually test how much the, the design itself would cost to be put together. This step also allowed us to visit the site and physically see the dimensions that we had only been seeing before in drawings and in photographs, which gave us a lot of insight into things that we hadn't necessarily been thinking about before and allowed us to continue to develop the design in more specific detail. From that point, our group made the final drawing as to what the design would ultimately look like within the space, and we were able to see the whole project be put together and installed into the, the, the theater space, as you can see in that next image. Um, before I came to UCT, I didn't think that we would get this kind of opportunity to work on a project where we could actually see the impact that our work would have on the people who we were designing for. Um, it was a really valuable experience to collaborate with so many different people and to go through all of the steps in this design process to eventually see the design being made and installed. We were able to learn so much um, through the making of this design and we're really grateful to have been able to um, have this opportunity to be a part of this process and to work with all these different people in, in making it happen together. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone. Um, that's our brief uh, presentation for uh, the architecture department. You are welcome to post your, your questions. 
uh, in the, um, I take it, Laz, we will be using the Q&A function to, to do that. Um, and uh, between myself, uh, 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 Philippa, Janine and Erin, we will uh, answer those questions within, with, uh, within the Q&A um, uh, tab. Hey there, so here's a question here um, for the portfolio. Do you do it when you have been accepted or does one have to do, uh, one do it with the application? So just to reiterate, the portfolio and the UCT application go together. So you need to do both at the same time. Um, as mentioned, the application um, deadline is the 31st of July, and then the deadline for the submission of the portfolio is the 31st of July, and the final deadline is the 31st of September. You, we cannot consider the application unless both components have been submitted. Thanks. Uh, there's a question here. Do you need to take art as a subject to apply for an architectural de degree? The answer is no. There's another question. My daughter is better at physics and math than art and drawing. Will that be a disadvantage? The answer is no. Just to reiterate on that question, physics is not a requirement for this uh, program. The, the courses that we consider are maths and English. Thank you, Janine. Uh, just to make sure the closing date for the portfolio is 21st of September. Janine, can you confirm that? Correct, that is the final uh, closing date. There's another question. Do you need to study BAS if you want to become an urban planner? There are various ways you can get into the urban design program. The BAS is one of them. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best platforms to prepare you, but you could also start with a planning uh, um, undergraduate degree, which you do at CPUT, but at UCT to get into the urban design masters, the BAS is probably the best platform for you to do that. And there's a difference between urban designer and, uh, and uh, planner. We also have a planning course in the postgraduate. There's another question. How many people get accepted into the BAS? Typically, we accept between 85 to 100 people. There's a question here about where they can view the examples of the portfolio. So Nina, I think we can, you uh, students, learners can go onto the website. And there's a flip through document that actually shows you what uh, some of these uh, um, portfolios look like. That's correct. The document, the brochure that, that Clint is referring to is also quite detailed because it gives you an idea of how to structure your portfolio in terms of what the committee is looking for. So please make a point of going through um, going through that that brochure as well. Thank you. There's another question. How math orientated is BAS or is it very design art design orientated? So in the BAS program, we focus on design and design skills. But you do require to you, you're required to have mathematics in order to, to be able to apply. Janine, do you want to elaborate on the math requirement? So there are maths courses that um, take place in that you require to take in the um, BAS program. Um, the theory of structures courses are particularly um, maths heavy. Okay, will there be more open days this year or is this the only one? Laz, do you want to take that one? <laughs> uh, from what I heard, there's another one coming in September. Sometime in September, that's what the VC said this morning. Thank you, Laz. Janine, would you like to take the question about the maths entry requirement? So the maths entry requirement is 50%. Um, sorry, I didn't see actually what was the question? Was it asking what it was? Uh, Janine, the question was asking about what types of maths? Oh, sorry. No, it's pure maths. So we don't we don't consider maths literacy. You need to have pure maths for for the application. Is there anything else one can study for a year and branch off to architecture the following year? 
Um, I'm not sure why you want to study something else and come into architecture later, but we have had cases where students go off and study things like philosophy and other programs and come back for the BAS. You must just bear in mind that you need to have done at least two years in the BAS program for you to be able to qualify or to graduate in that program. So you can't come in at the end of the program and only do one year. You have to do a minimum of two years. There's another question. If you get rejected, is it possible to get reconsidered with your NSC results? Janine, do you want to take that one? Uh, look, the, the program itself is quite competitive. As Philip has said, we can only take between 85 and 100 students, um, but our application pool can go up to, to about 1,300 to 1,500 applica applicants every year. So it is very competitive. Um, you can reapply the following year. You can also, if you if you feel strongly that your application should be reconsidered, request that the application be uh, be reconsidered. All right. Given the timing of the portfolio and students in grade twelve working to finals, can a grade eleven student prepare the portfolio this year for submission next year? That's very ambitious. If you would like to start. But I would like you to bear in mind that the portfolio requirements might change next year and you would have to address those. So keep an eye on the website if you want to test out how to do a portfolio this year in grade 11. You're very welcome to try. I think that's very good planning, but keep an eye on the website because the portfolio submission might change. Another question, must our portfolio and application be submitted together? Janine, would you like to take that? So the application gets submitted online via PeopleSoft and the portfolio gets sent to the department. Um, both, both have the same closing dates, which is the 31st of July, but the portfolio itself has a second closing date, which is the 31st of September. So not necessarily together, um, but they, ca they, they, they need to, uh, you need to comply with the closing dates. That, that each one has. Thank you, Janine. Clint, would you like to take this one? When we take architecture, will we learn skills that we can use outside of architecture? For example, art. The short answer is yes. Um, <laughs> I, th I think um, what's really interesting about studying architecture, particularly at UCT, uh, there is quite a strong focus on developing your, your, um, uh, your, your critical uh, knowledge. Um, and um, of the, uh, we obviously run a number of projects and uh, um, this, the, the processes are always sort of different to expose you guys to many ways of how to deal with, with the design process. Uh, and, that, and those processes um, vary sometimes from incorporating um, techniques from, 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 from the art discourse, even from literature, uh, from other social areas. I mean, I think a big one at the moment that's that that we employ quite a lot is the idea of storytelling, and all these things are really about interdisciplinary learning. So once you are, are done with uh, with the undergraduate program, definitely you'll be able to uh, apply these techniques in other and other areas uh, uh, in the industry. And, and art, uh, I think it's very very fairly easy uh, uh, to do. So I think. Um, um, is uh, you know uh, quite a, a lot of uh, popular figures out there that has done uh, a number of uh, uh, artistic uh, work um, where they've actually started with um, with uh, uh, with architecture. At Zapiro, the the uh, 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 the cartoonist, um, he studied at at at, at UCT. Um, yeah, um, there's, there's there's many uh, uh, many work, uh, many things that you can go into. There's a question: Would e EGD be an advantage? The short answer is no. Clint, another one. Um, how will the studies of design contribute towards architecture? Well, I think um, yeah, um, uh, let me just keep that question. How, how does the, the study of design um, uh, add to architecture? If you're talking about the study of design before you come to, 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 to UCT, meaning um, doing design at, at, at high school. Um, I think it, it, it does help to a certain extent where uh, the idea of, uh, of, of, of abstraction um, 
is is a way that one can uh, can can explore within the learning of architecture. Um, and then uh, I, I think uh, uh, what what design uh, exploring uh, design in in the learning of architecture and in in the practice of architecture is interesting that it uh, does allow one to explore innovative ways to address uh, some of the very uh, rudimentary problems that we have to to uh, to face with, within the world. So um, there is a kind of normative way that you apply architecture, uh, but to really come up with new solutions, we have to be innovative. And that's where I think uh, the studying of design and bringing other, uh, other disciplines within the learning of architecture is very useful uh, to be able to come up with new and innovative uh, solutions. Thank you, Clint. Just to reiterate, math lit does not count for this application. And there's a question here about are there work opportunities in Cape Town for women in architecture? Absolutely, yes. There's a lot of women in architecture. Um, and then uh, someone was asking about math, math as a bridging course. You need to have math to apply for this course. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, where can we find the application brochure? Once again, Clint, please share your screen. I encourage you to go to the website to the APG website and have a look at the portfolio requirements and what you need to be able to apply. Thank you very much, Laz. He's managed to put that as an announcement. I hope everyone can see it. Okay, Janine, do you see any questions you'd like to answer? We've got about two minutes left. There was one about um, somebody doing bad in maths in grade 11 and um, would they still still be considered with better matric results. Your grade 11 and your grade 12 um, results both need to be, um, need to be need to be submitted for the application, but we will look at the matric results uh, for for that. So yes, try and do your best, do the best as um, as best as you can in your matric results to try and make up for what happened in grade 11. Thank you very much. Any questions you see, Clint? We have about two minutes and Laz is being strict with time. There's a question for you, Erin. Um, how different was the program to your expectations, as in how was your experience in general as a first year student? Was it overwhelming? Um, I would say that it was overwhelming initially because for me personally, I actually should have done more research as to exactly what the course entailed and what it would be like to be an architecture student. But I think that after that initial shock, um, I mean, the course is structured in a way to whichever point you're starting from to develop you and to guide you through the process so that now in my third year, I feel a lot more confident about what I'm doing. Um, so. Yeah, it, it's it's all about the journey and the process to, to getting to this final point, essentially. Right, um, there's, Sorry, there, there's yeah. one question here about whether the portfolio needs to be submitted bo uh, both by the 31st and then again by the 30th um, of September. The answer is no, your, your portfolio is submitted once. If you cannot meet the deadline of the 31st of July, you have an opportunity then to submit by the September deadline. So you don't submit the portfolio twice, you only submit it once. Thanks. Thank you. There's a question. Is 85% for maths good enough? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I think we're coming to a close. Um, if you have any more questions, please contact Nanette Pickover. Her uh, contact details are on our website. Once again, please engage with our website. All that information is there. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. We're going to be signing off.